Hello, yeah, so hi guys, I am Chintan Ruparel. I'm the founder of Torch Capital and a strategist at uh, Algobulls. At Algobulls, we make strategies which can automate your trading by using Algo Trading. So, oh uh, yeah, uh, let me play this. Yeah, so uh, I'm a person uh, who was in the market for the past four to five years. Uh, Today we will walk through the concepts of uh, relative strength index, and I'm a certified trader in equity and currency derivatives by NASM, and I'm currently pursuing BTEC from NMMS Mumbai. So, what is Torch Capital? Torch Capital is a firm incorporated in Mumbai, provides news news breaks through our uh, WhatsApp group present. I'll send the link of the WhatsApp group group in the chat section. Uh, WhatsApp link has been sent. Everyone can join in and to check what is towards capital. I've sent our website also. So yeah, as of, of now only that's it. Right. Yeah. Uh, then uh, if anyone wants, if anyone wants to join in through the QR code section, it is present. You get scan it and be a part of Torch Capital right now only. Second, I'll wait for a second on the slide if anyone is scanning it. I can see people joining in. Yeah, it's a good thing. So, so um, what you what you are, what we do here is we provide news breaks throughout the day, such as blog deals, updates on the pre market value, what is the moment, what are the COVID cases. We are. We are in close contact with many live work services, which help us provide such news breaks at the most quickest speed. So that is it. So yeah, we'll start the uh, webinar now. So yeah, we'll start the webinar now. So yeah. So the thing we'll cover in this webinar, so this is re regarding the relative strength index. So what we'll cover here is what is about the basics of the relative strength index, what does the relative strength index indicate? <coughs> and how does RSI work in a bull and a bear market? We'll have a walkthrough and then we'll see how RSI index swing rejections work in the bullish and the bearish category. See, uh, first thing I want to say is uh, what is the technical? Yeah, we have a chat. Check it. The voice is not clear, echo. All right, I'll do something about it. Deep yeah, so things I will cover in this, I'll repeat of it. It's not uh, audible to the people. So what are, uh, what are the things that we'll cover in this webinar? Uh, first will be what are, the, what are the basics of the relative strength index? What the relative strength index of a script indicates to us? So relative strength index in a bull in a bear market and we'll walk through all the concepts of how rsi works then we'll see rsi swing reductions in both bullish and bearish category we have graphs present we'll use live trading software like uh, trading view to understand it and what are the limitations of Pratip Chushi. Pratip Chushi has some issue yeah, that's it. so that's clear so yeah, and then we'll just move on. So yeah, RSI, yeah. So first of all, what are technical indicators? Technical indicators are indicators which are used by market participants to understand and predict what could be the future view of the market be. Uh, technical indicators have been performing well for the past more, almost 100, 100 years. They, they were working in 1950, so they are working still in 2020, 2021. So they are perfectly made. And one more thing about technical indicator is just using one technical indicator won't be enough to make your whole trading system work. Uh, there might be, you, you, you might need just a second. You might need multiple technical indicators. So what we do here is that we use at towards we use uh, indicators like relative strength index, 
we use uh, ADX, we use Bollinger Bands, we use Volumes, we use Super Trends, we use uh, what do we use? We use Stock Series, we use MACD. There are multiple uh, things which we use in, at Towards Capital. So first we'll understand what is the Relative Strength Index. So by bare words, what does Relative Strength Index mean? That means what is the strength of the, what is the strength? What is the strength that the stock possesses? So the Relative Strength Index is a technical indicator that represents the recent momentum in the price. So, uh, so RSI, what does RSI give us? RSI indicates, it's a technical indicator, so it has to indicate something. So what does it indicate that when the stock <coughs> is it positive? The stock has been overbought or oversold. So what is overbought? So when a security is overbought, it means that the price is valued. Like the uh, price might have seen a good rally. That uh, that is why it is called overbought. What is oversold is the exact opposite of the thing. Like right? there, there has been a certain selling scene on the stock which is way too high, which was uh, which drops the stock into the oversold category. So RSI was developed by J. Wellis Wilder Jr. And it was developed in 1978 in his, in his book, you know, as New Concepts and Technical Trading Systems. So as you can see, it was developed in 1978 and still we are studying about it. What is going on in the chat here? Yeah. Three. Or three minutes. Yeah, so good point, guys. Yeah, so uh, it was so. See, this RSI was developed in 1978, it was almost 40 40 years back, but it was developed in 1970, and still we are studying it as of now, as of 2021, 2022. Sorry. So it might mean mean that the, the technical indicator is still working, it's still in place, it still performs well. So what is RSI? RSI is a momentum oscillator. See, what is an oscillator? Oscillator, if, you, if anyone knows what is a pendulum, a pendulum is a ball which is attached to the thumb or the, what do we call the support. And it moves between both the extremes. Same the RSI is the same thing. It, it is a line plotted between two extremes. The lower extreme will be the zero, and the upper extreme is hundred. So RSI values can't go above hundred. The length between which the RSI moves is zero and one hundred. <laughs> yeah. So RSI can also be used to say what is the general trend. So what is trending? So what is trends? See, so if a, a stock has gone from zero to ten, it means that the stock has is in uh, a good bullish trend, a strong bullish trend. Uh, if a stock goes from zero to two, if it shows a rise of five to seven percent in let's say a week, it is called a bullish trend. If it shows a good buying and it's seen a rally of 20-20% in one week, it just might be a stronger bullish trend. Same happens with the bearish ones. A 2-2.5-3% two, two correction, a stock might put it in bearish category, but a 10% or 15% drop might put it in something where it might have a correction period or the RSI might drop and it might give a general trend of overly bullish. So yeah, that's it. What is the basic definition of RSI? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, the software which we use uh, at the daily business for studying scripts and stuff like that is TradingView. It's a popular software available on Android, iOS, macOS, Linux, everywhere. It works very well. It has. Uh, we can use multiple indicators in it. And yeah, so one more specific thing about RSI is that RSI graphs are always plotted below the RSI graphs are always plotted below the securities price chart. So see if uh, this is Nifty Futures chart, it's a one day chart on NFC. So, and this is what the uh, candlestick chart looks like. And see if the RSI chart is most of the time plotted below that only. That is how our how it works. Okay. 
So that is relative strength index. So we'll see uh, what is the relative strength index. Uh, uh, I'll answer it afterwards. So yeah, uh, on the can so see on, in the first price chart, we can see a blue line that is the standard moving average of the stock of the, the script of the whatever the security we have placed in it. So what is that security is how it is calculated by adding. So let's say if we are taking standard moving average of 20 days or let's say of we are taking a standard moving average of 50 candles. So we take closing rates of those 50 candles and divide it by n number of days. Or in this case, it's 50. So it might change to 70, 100, 20, whatever on, on what basis of you are calculating, which might fetch a line. It's called the standard moving average which is plotted on the security. Am I not audible? What is why is not clear? Okay, why is not clear? He's moving so much. Sorry. Yeah. So this is how it is. Standard moving average is the blue line present on the securities price chart. How is it calculated? It is the sum of n number of closing days, n number. So let's say if we are taking standard moving average of 20 candles. So we'll add 20 candles closing rates. So let's say if it's whatever values added just divided by 20. Now you will get that standard moving average. See, so every time we see the standard moving average will dip on how the security performs. That might give, give us the overall trend. So graph below the security is called the relative strength index. So the purple line which you see is the relative strength index of the stock. <coughs> so yeah, the relative strength index we often plotted below the price chart as we can see and what does the software help us with is by forming the yellow line which is a bit more serious a bit more of a detail which you can if you are if you study it is good for you but it is not that important when it comes to that so it is the moving average of rsi so the way we calculated moving average of the security same way we are, the software calculates the moving average of the relative strength index as well which uh, helps the which helps the normal day trader to get a better idea that whether the RSI breakout has been seen or no. Again, we had a webinar a few days back where we explained how breakouts work, how breakdowns work, how squeeze works. So yeah, breakout is like something which we can say okay, uh, if it moves, it if, if it breaks a certain resistance. So let's see if. Uh, Let's say, if, say ITC breaks the resistance of 260, 265. We might expect a good rally after that resistance is broken. Same way with, same way with, uh, let's say, if uh, our current as of now, Nifty, if it breaks the 15,700, there might be further weakening and Nifty as well. So that is how breakouts and breakdowns work. So, yeah, I'll explain this once again for everyone. Let's be clear with the basics at least. So the blue line here is the standard moving average. How is it calculated? N number of closing rates of N candles divided by N. So let's say 20 days and divide by 20. Let's say 50 days divided by 50. Let's say 200 days divided by 200. All right. So that is the standard moving average of the stuff. Below that is the RSI value. What is RSI, relative strength index? The purple line plotted between 0 to 100 is the relative strength index. And the yellow line is the moving average of RSI. What is the moving average of RSI? Closing rates of every RSI candle divided by n number of RSI candles. That's what it is. See, if, if you can understand RSI is a very simple indicator, if you can grab this opportunity in this webinar, if you can master that, simple indicator you can combine it with your various strategies with your various trends with your various sentimental opinions and can work well with your trading systems yeah so uh, we we'll, so what does the relative strength index indicate see rsi is an rsi oscillates between 0 to 100 it is often plotted uh, below the chart Below the security of chart for better interpretation. See, 
if uh, you won't understand how well it is interpreted but if we look into the next graph uh, we'll have a live demo on trading you as well how it works and uh, the other so we can get a better in why it is plotted below the security graph see and next uh, rsi above 70 So relative strength and next above seventy shows that the security is being overbought. So what I said overbought means the security has seen some amount of good buying, some amount of good rally it has seen, so it has gone to the overbought stock and may be set for a trend reversal. See, these are trivial rules. This might not be true for everyone. This is not the true fit case. So there might be certain factors. So let's say. <coughs> RSI is about ninety, and there's a good sentiment. There's some good news. There's some sentimental boost. There is a merger announcement. Anything, then just the technical indicators don't work with the trivial rules. Same as if the RSI is of below thirty, the security is oversold. So what is oversold is that the stock might have plummeted from the recent highs around ten to twenty percent correction, and the RSI is below thirty. This set of traditional levels can be modified. So let's so let's say if uh, the stock is moving only between between the RSI levels of thirty and sixty or thirty and ninety or something like that, you can have you can create your own relative strength index levels, which is best suited for your own security. This is suited for your best of your own security dealing. So let's say if you have a point that we will only buy a stock when the resistance. Of RSI is at fifty, and uh, it shouldn't break the top of eighty. Then that is how your trading system works, and you can modify those trivial rules and have your own set of RSI values. And so, yeah, so what happens to RSI in a bullish market? So what is the bullish market? Is that a stock? So let's see, bullish market. Uh, let's have bullish sentiment for a stock. Is different from a bullish market. Bullish sentiment might just take one stock, thirty to forty percent up. But while a bullish market, in bullish market, every participant. So let's say if we take consideration Nifty, so every Nifty participant might have one of thirty to forty percent in one month in a bull market. So, and how does RSI look during a bull market? Is which we are learning right now. Same in so. RSI stays range bound between forty to ninety levels. See, uh, if you can see, we can see that in this also RSI has dropped between fifteen only the end candles, not in the middle candles. So forty uh, acted as support, but also seventy acted as resistance, and there was no such buying scene. Same, same. It is between the range of forty and ninety only. Well, forty acts as support. We have taken graphs over here, so we'll study that later on. But as of now, just just get the bookish knowledge. We'll do the practicals later on. See, in a bearish market, the RSI stays range bound between ten and sixty. So ten might act as ten might act as support because if it drops below ten, it might go further below. So we can see that eight or nine might be the levels. We can see that. So see if the levels are at eight or nine, we can see we can have a good buying opportunity. So RSI can be also used by long-term investors to spot a good bottom. So in March 2020, when Nifty plummeted around 30-35 percent from top, the RSI was near six, twelve, or twelve or thirteen. The investors, uh, but it was. But between twelve to thirteen for a very long time. So to time the market in that way is a bit difficult. But for long term investors, it did spot the bottom well, and have earned and well, and that analysis rewarded them very heavily with with the current rate of Nifty somewhere near seventeen thousand six hundred or so. So yeah, uh, so RSI stays range bound between ten to sixty in a bearish market and fifty access resistance. You we'll see this in the graph. Just a second, I'll have a bit of water. Yeah. <coughs> so, as you can see, this is Nifty's one-day chart. Uh, and so we, here we can see there is a good 
pull back in the markets we can see that between august let's say, if can you can you guys see august candle uh, august and august 16 candles we have seen that rsi broke 50 levels and was in a rally mode so let's say at august on the august candle the nifty was at 15750 15750 was the close of nifty on august 1 from there till november 1st the rsi levels didn't come below 50 as we can see the rsi levels were above 50 during that time and hence we could see there was a good level good rally in nifty see 15,500 say it made a top of almost 18,500 though the current pullback but the rally was such that the pullback would happen anytime so RSI levels were supported at good levels and we, we saw 3,300 3, point rally in nifty on just one technical indicator and one technical factor no doubt the bullish sentiment the good news on the COVID vaccinations and many other factors which propel the NFT. But we can see that this, this type of technical indicators do work in a bull market or even if there are certain uncertainties in the market or see. And once again, I'll say that a, a single indicator, a, a single technical indicator won't solve all your uh, trading problems or, or won't make your trading system more accurate. You, you'll have to use a couple of them, you'll have to use four of them, you'll have to use six of them. There are hedge funds that are public who use almost 12 to 15 indicators just to study one strong, but that's how they make the most money. So, <coughs> once, I'll, once again, I'll repeat how RSI works in a bull market. So August, you can see Nifty was at 15,715 levels and it hasn't, uh, and the RSI had topped around 50. From there till November, RSI didn't drop below the levels of 50. Uh, till almost, let's say, till December, it didn't drop below the level of 40. If you can see in the graph, 40 acted as a resistance from a very, very long time. Hence, we can see that even if we check it from June, June, May, June week, we can see that 14,750 was the lowest level. 14,500 was the lowest level. But RSI was at such strong and the bullish sentiment around the vaccination, COVID vaccination, the unlock phase of India and everything. The propelment of uh, the index was quite a bit unusual. So let's say 14,750, the RSI was at 50 levels. From there, it went to a top of 70 in June. Then again, it became sideways around 50, 50, 50 to 60 levels. And then from August, it went to our level of almost, let's say, 87 was the high, I feel. 87. And you can see that the rally was such so steep, so steep. It made, it made so much money to everyone. So let's say that's how technical indicators actually work in a bull market. Same with the bear market. So, yeah. Uh, so this is a chart of a pharma company, Sprites Pharma. Uh, the, it, uh, it was a uh, good stock, it, uh, but uh, due to some regulate, regulatory approvals and some disapprovals of the company, uh, it had some hittings in the last couple of months. So as you can see here is that in August, like yeah, in August, the top made was of 800. 800 rupees was the top made for Strides Pharma. From there, the RSI value never crossed 50. The RSI levels never crossed with the level of 50, which, which made the stock more weak. See, if you can see, 8, 800 was the high and the current price was 400, while the intraday low of uh, the most bearish candle was around 400 rupees. So let's say there's a 50% wealth depletion senior just because the RSI levels were almost at the negative zone or the bear category zone. So here it never broke the support of 52. It always stayed under 50 and the lowest it went was around 20 or 18, I guess. So this is how, see, see this, this whole thing was not just that the whole stock plummeting was not on the basis of that the RSI levels were weak. There are multiple factors here. 
which we have to consider. So this is how it works. So I'll repeat once again. From August till December, the RSI levels stood very weak for Strides Pharma on a, a daily chart. So the RSI levels never broke the level of 50. It was always in the range bound between 50 to 30 and never even trying to get near the overbought category. It was always under the in the oversold category. And as we can see, there was a <coughs> there was a plummeting in the stock of almost more than 50 of almost 50%. Uh, eight, 800 rupees share was now available at around 400. So uh, yeah, according to the trivial formula, now every trader might have thought that if the RSI has broken such highs, it might have some sort of um, some sort of comeback, some sort of pullback, but it didn't happen because see, as I told you, there are multiple factors which affect the news was such bad that they didn't react to they didn't react well to it. So that is how RSI works in a bear market. Next we come is to relative strength index. So when the stock is an uptrend, so uh, we saw that RSI the bull market, the stock was an uptrend for quite a long time. <coughs> it was in uh, it was in a bullish trend for a very, very long time. And due to which it might mark a confusion because according to what the trivial definition of RSI, it was that the stock will reverse its cycle once it is bought in the overbought category. But this might, for new traders who are learning RSI for the first time right now, it might spark a confusion that if the RSI levels were at 80, why didn't the stock fall? But then again, the sentiment might have been very good. There was, if we see the Nifty chart only, the sentiment was very good. The country was reopening. The COVID vaccination had program was. Uh, evolved so there was no bad news and which propelled the market which propelled the market in such a way that we can see how with what top did it make on in august and somewhere around august or november i, I think so yeah uh yeah see uh again for i have written this presentation i'll send it to you uh send it to your alice blue foundation yeah, uh, so uh, RSI is used with many other technical indicators, like trend and identifier. So what is a trend identifier? It is, again, a plugin also available in uh, trading. It helps in generating what the general trend of a stock is. Let's say it's bullish or bearish. It will directly give an answer whether it's bullish or bearish. So we have to think out of the box, not every time RSI might show a trend reversal at above 80, 85 levels. So there might be some sort of confusion, but over the time you will master the trend, master the indicator if you learn about it very decently. So yeah, RSI swing rejections in the bullish category. Yeah, uh, so a trading technique. So this is a trading technique in which you can take with if this type of things that are showing on your screen, you can take a trade in the same way and have certain good profit booking. So, uh, so how does RSI swing rejection work? Uh, we'll first see how the theory looks like, then we'll have the graph representation. So first, the first thing happens in RSI swing rejection is the RSI falls into the oversold category. So what is the oversold category? The levels between 0 to 30. So RSI levels fall between 0 to 30. Then the second step is that they cross the level of 30. Then it again forms a dip, but it does not touch the oversold category. Then it breaks the most recent time. And I agree if this goes a bit bouncer, it's fine. We'll make you understand with the graph presence. So yeah, this is what RSI swing projection looks like. See, first RSI falls into the oversold category. As you can see around the 15th uh, January date, RSI fell below the level of 30. As you can see, 
then where the number 2 is marked it has shown that the rsl level will again cross the level of 30 it crosses the level of 30 then it forms a dip once it crosses 30 then it again forms a good good up movement a uh, top of almost 40 40 then it forms a dip but it does not go in the oversold category as you can see and then it again rallies to then then it again breaks the most recent high and then we can see a good rally so let's say if you see approximately you'll see an opportunity between three and four that if between three and four the rsi does not break the level of 30 and it stays between 32 and you see a reversal coming up 34 36 you can take a long position in a stock around let's say 41 40 40 and half so if you can if you go along on what on what is our descriptive let's around 41 rupees you and the height made was around 48 48 half so seven seven and a half rupees a script which works on rsi swing rejection spotting the spotting rsi swing rejection in just the first two steps is technically not a right decision because it might change any time because it is like a technical indicator which works and you aren't the only one watching it there are multiple people there are multiple traders there are multiple hedge funds there are multiple banking associations watching the stock like that so and you might not have the capital as compared to what they have so you have to be pretty careful while trading and this stuff so i'll explain this once again so one on on 15 the rsi falls below the overs into the oversold category on second it crosses back that it, it makes a comeback that i don't want to stay in the oversold category it will come above the levels of 30. then it again then it rallies around new high it creates a level of almost 40 around rsi it breaks then it again falls but this time it does not fall in the oversold category it stays balanced it will might be between 30 32 it will stay and then we might see a good breakout in our rsi levels so see once it broke the level of 32 once it touched the level of 32 it, gave, it broke the level of 40 and all the way went up to 70 talking about the rsi not about the script so we can see that you have to understand how breakouts also work so then we can see that we can the stock we can, a signal might be generated in your head or in whatever in your trading system if you back test this that a trading opportunity will be developed between three and four or let's say in the rising tide of four you might get a trading opportunity that's how rsi works next we move on to the same way how rsi works in bull market same way it works in a bear market just a second yeah so then we come to rsi in rsi swing rejections in the bearish category yeah so rsi so this if we keep a mirror in between rsi swing rejection and bullish we might get a same image as what is called the bearish so how we saw a good rally in the stock even we might see a good dip in the stock to so see the rsi rises into the overbought category the rsi crosses below the 70 mark forms another high and but it, then it more breaks the most recent low i understood you won't understand it but let's study it how it works see First, the RSI, see, we have numbered the stock. RSI is into the overbought territory. If you can see, RSI is in the overbought territory around 80. RSI, then the RSI drops below 70. It forms a new high. It, it makes a good, good new top, which is the number three, if you can see in the graph. And then it falls below that and for, and the stock plummet. So let's say if we here you can spot a sign between three. So let's say after three, uh, if the levels are come near two's bottom, we can you can spot a good trading opportunity here. So let's say if you short it around, I'll think you will get a trade signal around 160, and the most recent drop was around 141 so 15 15 17 rupees the reward ratio is how this 
trading system on RSI swing rejections work. It is quite useful, but it works. It, but this also works with multiple parameters like volumes. If see, if see one more thing that I forgot to tell you is that RSI uh, RSI works with multiple things. If, if there is a good breakout seen in RSI levels, we can see a good breakout in RSI levels. So it has to it has to be with volumes. If, if the stock is in, uh, let's say if uh, let's say if the stock will take, yeah, let's say if CDSL breaks with levels of around uh, 1500 to 2000 share, it doesn't make some sense because 1500 2000 level isn't a good volume. But let's say if CDSL breaks with almost let's say seven to eight lakh shares, it might show good there is good volume in the stock, there's a good breakout in the stock, so might the rally might continue so this is how as a single direction works i'll repeat it once again so rsi is into the overbought category then it crosses back the 70 mark then it forms uh back into the overbought category and then it gives all its gain so this is how uh, rsi swing rejections work last what are the limitations of rsi as we say that as i said on the, in the starting phase of this webinar that uh, no R no neither RSI nor Bollinger Bands nor anything works as a single technical indicator. You would have to use multiple of them. Say RSI just gives us where the price is headed. So where the price is is it in the bullish category or the bearish category? So RSI. So. RSI can also give you the long-term trend of the security. So let's say if we take in account securities like ITC or Hero Motor Corp, which have been which have been stocks which have been in the not moving category for quite a long time. Mainly Hero Motor Corp and ITC, ITC are index stocks which are which have not shown great momentum in neither in 2020. Not in 2021. They have, they have most of the days they are flat and they are range bound between certain values. So that is more important to understand that how how a long term trend of stock is. So a true reversal side might be a false alarm. So as I told you that a newbie trader might think that RSL levels have crossed 90. Why isn't the stock falling? Why isn't the stock falling? But uh, there might be certain other factors which are plummeting the stock that could buy the scene, certain book, big block deals have taken place. But it might not be the same case for such things. A false negative would be such as like, it might be like that um, a level is around 30, but the stock isn't, getting, isn't going up because that's how the trivial formula is taught. So there might be multiple factors affecting how RSI works. And secondly, yeah, that, those are the limitations of RSI. But as see, um, uh, for for a long term investor, RSI levels at thirty might be a good thing to see. As RSI levels below thirty are good, good to buying opportunities. RSI levels below zero, as we saw you did back ago in RBL Bank, RSI levels were at zero when the stock limited twenty three percent. The RSI levels, such RSI levels, attracted investors, which again plummeted, to, which again plummeted, which again gave the stock a good rise of near 150, close near 148. Also, there were good comments from the RBI that the bank was very solid in nature. So this is how RSI work. We'll this might be the last slide. Yeah, uh, we'll get to your questions right now. What are the questions? How can we? Uh, so yeah, uh, how can we verify RSI breakouts? Um, um, what's your name? Ramar. So yeah, Ramar. There is um, if you use Edelweiss mobile broker, there is a breakout in breakout which can be shown there. Uh, if you can ping me, I'll send my WhatsApp number. I'll tell you how does that work. I'll send it to Ram or. You can ping me or I'll show you how our, how you can spot RSI breakouts. Uh, any other any other sort of doubts? Or should we move on to the? So yeah. Uh, before I forget, uh, if you would like to join our WhatsApp group, I'll. 
I'll send you the WhatsApp. Are uh, everyone? So yeah, I'll send in the WhatsApp chat link if everyone, anyone is interested to join. Yeah, Anish Kumar is asking RSI along with which indicators work well. See, so uh, uh, what we use, uh, what we use at uh, towards capital and what we use at Algo Bulls is one number one is Bollinger Bands. Second, we use is RSI. So I'll just type in uh, indicators used uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, comma RSI. We use RSI uh, for scripts. We use volumes. Uh, then we work with something called as ADX. We use moving averages, moving averages, and then we use MACD. So these are the ones which we use at Watch Capital for our technical analysis. So yeah, these are some of those technical indicators. Any sort of other questions? Uh, any sort of questions? Coming in, Bollinger Band. Uh, if you would like to check what to watch capital is, I'll send the link for that as well. And the WhatsApp link. Uh, yes. Yeah, you guys can join in. So I feel that's it as of now. Any sort of question? Can you mention the difference between? RS and RSI. See, RS might be the relative strength. So, what, what are the difference between uh, long and how long? So you can understand. See, uh, what are, what about super trends and VWF? So, uh, yeah. Uh, first, I'll finish with Ramar. Can you, so, so uh, let's say relative strength is a factor, whereas relative strength index is a value. So. Uh, um, let's say how long something is and 10 centimeter long it is. What is the difference between both of them is how long it is and here we have the exact value of how long it is. That is the difference between relative strength and relative strength index. So what is what about super trend? Super trend works well, but I don't uh, know about VWAP, but super trends work well. So we, uh, uh, if you know basic understanding of Bollinger Bands and RSI, I don't think you need a technical indicator like super trend or something. If you can work on uh, that becomes a psychology only. And how it works. Any more questions coming in if possible? Yeah. What about super trend? Yeah, what about super trend? So, if uh, anyone is interested in contacting me regarding any doubts about this session or something, I'll send in my contact number 98190. Yeah, so you can contact me there. You can also follow Towards Capital on Instagram. Towards Capital on Instagram and of course you can you guys I can see you guys are joining the group. We've got around 12 so we have got around 20 25 participants already joining in. So yeah that's a good thing. Who is this high chintan? Yeah I'll get back to you once the webinar is done. So yeah. Any other sort of questions from anyone? So yeah, I mean, uh, oh, so uh, this might be the person who had the doubt regarding RS. See, uh, Ram, I'll send you the, how I work with Edelweiss. I'll send you the a screen snap video of it. Then you can use it with you on your reference. Uh, that's fine. So, yep, that's it. Any sort of doubts, any sort of questions, any sort of references? Someone sent a reference regarding this channel. I provide free use levels on equity bank of the options. 
Let's have it to store it by sir. Trade mindset Prashant could work. So, does anyone have any questions? Uh, does anyone, let's do some sort of charting work here. Let's go. Yeah. So, this is how we work at Watch Capital. Now, we do it Watch Capital. We'll put the chat section here. Yes, uh, if anyone wants to understand how does our trade type of trading system works, we use which indicators do we use? Uh, so yeah, here we have three, four main types of indicators. See, as of now, this is an index. So let's turn it to some sort of script. Is my screen visible to everyone? Okay, yeah, it has stopped actually. Sorry. We share it from here. Yeah, now it might be visible. See, here we are understanding how we do technical analysis at watch. Let's say we type in the lands and history. Oh, let's say. Uh, so here we can get, we'll do the one minute chart. Yeah. So here, what, what are the main things which we are considering here is one is this. This is a candlestick chart. The blue uh, lines on it are the Bollinger Bands. The middle red line we see here is what we call the moving average, the standard moving, simple moving average. Below here we have the RSI. Uh, and the RSI is moving average that we studied today. And here we have the ADX. Okay. Uh, then what we have here is, here we can keep a track of anything. We can create a watch list. And then here you can have a complete detail of what the company is here. Yeah, I'll explain this. And then get everything, earnings, income statement, and everything. So I, I highly recommend the work using uh, trading view to everyone. It's a very good app, at least for technical and stuff like what we what you are guys have come for. So this is how Pradeep Joshi is raising hand for so long. What happened? Hello, yeah. So I hope everyone got it. And I hope everyone had a good time learning relative strength index. Good, good. Again. And we yeah we'll do one more thing one more last thing before we end this webinar. Let me open it just what well, just a second. If you have any sort of doubts, you can put it in the chat section. You can also ping in as personal to me, Pradeep Joshi. Pradeep Joshi, any sort of doubts you had, you were raising your hand. You were raising your hand throughout the webinar. That's one. Yeah. So we'll do one last thing and then we'll close. So, yeah. This is what uh, Algo Bulls work with. So this is a strategy card. We have a, this is my strategy. If you can see by it watch capital. The strategy's name is mean reversion. So this works with Bollinger Bands. And so yeah, here you can see the minimum capital requirement is around 18,000. And the days that works is 180. You can share what Bollinger Bands and how the signal is generated here. We can have, so for making complete transparency, we have something called as backtesting approach. So till date, the uh, strategy has generated an ROI of 21,000 rupees and the maximum loss was of just around 13%. The hit ratio was, is around 46%. The average trades per day are around two. 
number of long trades the strategy has gone to about 274 while the number of short trades are around 302 so your the returns are around all time returns are around 120 uh the uh, the instrument you used your is equity uh, the equity is bail bharat heavy electronics limited 173 people are already using the strategy uh, the last 30 day return was of negative 7% while last two weeks negative return of 66% and last three days return was just around 1.7% negative so here you can see how many people are taking and trades on, on a daily basis you can see you have multiple pages of trades going on and you can have the complete insight so yeah i'll have to log in with just through my safari so that's it for today i hope you had i hope you had a good time i hope i was of some help i'll again post in all my details in the chat and then we'll close the session I'll post my contact. And I'll I'll get to that one advice thing with you on chat. Oh, our aspects will need to worry about it. So yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for being here on a Sunday evening. I hope you had a good time. Thank you so much, and bye bye. Thank you.